Hi, I'm Nancy Novacek. And I am Allison Rowe, and we are here today to talk about our mentor and friend, Ted Purvis, who passed away uh, this year on July 4th. We want to thank Creative Time and Suzanne Cockrell, Ted's wife, for the honor of making this presentation. Uh, and we're here today to try and represent all the students, all the artists, all the activists whose lives were impacted by Ted's life and work. As some of you may know, Ted was many things. He was an artist, a scholar, a teacher, a thinker, and a writer, just to name a few. My first interaction with Ted was an hour-long phone call following up my application to the CCA Social Practice Program. We talked about Star Wars and Legos, reality television, and how karaoke or exercise could be art. I immediately knew I was speaking with such a curious mind, an expansive thinker, and an incredibly generous human being, and I just wanted to be around him. For my first time, for the first time ever, I felt like my ideas about art were not only valid, but potentially exciting. And I also knew from that first chat that we had that Ted was the kind of person I really wanted to be around. Although I have to admit, I was excited but pretty skeptical about the idea of undertaking a formalized education in socially engaged art. I was worried that that institutional context would imbricate me within many of the systems that I sought and still seek to undermine. However, what I, and I think many others, found in Ted was an educator who valued and supported and fostered my work in such a way that I developed new vocabularies and methods for working within, alongside, and against institutional power so I could craft my own space and my own path forward. In these months since Ted's passing, we've come to find that our personal experiences were not at all unique, but consistently demonstrative of a man who exemplified the social in social practice. For those of you who didn't have the good fortune as we did of knowing Ted personally, he was a punk, a cultural sponge, a sweet tooth, a fan of Foucault and Katy Perry, and a fan of fan culture itself. Ted loved baseball and ramen and pants that could be simultaneously categorized as sweatpants and dress pants. As an artist, Ted and his wife Suzanne collaborated under the rubric of field fairing to produce works that explored the overlay of rural and urban systems and the nature of people in place as seen through social economy, history, and local ecology. Ted, one of the champions of social practice, put words to projects and shaped a point of view. Ted's book, What We Want is Free, first published in 2005, played a crucial role in shaping and directing how many of us come to speak and think about the notion of exchange in contemporary art. When Ted presented at the Creative Time Summit in 2011, he spoke about his decision to revisit that book with Shane Aslan Selzer, in part because of his desire to place more emphasis on a discussion of form, more specifically the question of social form. Ted's proposition of social form remains as pertinent today as it was then, and we think these words warrant repeating here today in this space with this community, because these are the questions and ideas that Ted asked of all of us. So to quote from that presentation, developing critical positions around these projects that are related to other areas of social theory seems like a clear priority, and for me, this has led to a question of social form. The sociologist Georg Simmel defines social form as the mode of interaction amongst individuals through or in a shape in which specific content achieves social reality. This is distinct from social context, content, which is considered to be the interest, purpose, or motivation of an interaction. As such, a social form could be something like a market stall, or a protest march, or a meeting at work, or a wedding. Considering social projects from the vantage point of form moves a conversation away from a project's quality and moves it towards a project's capacity. What is, a work what is a work's agency? How does it operate within the social world? How does its status as an artwork affect its occupation as a social form, if at all? In drawing on Foucault, Ted went on to consider how socially engaged art occupies the ideal position to speak about this precise moment in which we are living because, quote, the frequent relocation of these art projects into the world at large 
also gives an opportunity for artists to occupy long-standing social forms and repurpose them into idiosyncratic and subjective ends. Whether these forms are temporary shops, or free newspapers, or push carts, or public meetings, they possess the, p the potential to alter our understanding of what potentially social forms might hold. Such projects might not simply inform us about the present world in which we are living, they might also generate another one, and another one, and another alongside. Ted was an unflagging champion of students and burgeoning voices in the field, and he made all of us who went to CCA, or who worked with him in any capacity, or just had a chat with him somewhere, feel his enthusiasm for what we were doing, and that each of us was on a vitally important path. And this points to the reason that we're here today, to remember Ted. He believes so deeply in the critical importance of the kind of work we are here to talk, we are here at the summit to talk about, and the activist, revolutionary, and rabble-rousing attitude that fuels it. Ted's belief in socially engaged works was to be a champion of us all. Our memorial to him today is a collection of over 70 projects sent in by social practice alumni and colleagues from around the world. Ted's legacy lives on in all of us. <laughs>